Hey there boys and girls, welcome back out to the channel. Kyle here, and we are tonight continuing on uh, with our 1904 VW build uh, that we're building for our uh, our other sand rail and uh, also to go to the No Name Nationals this year with. Uh, I think last video where we left you out with, um, we had just finished the short block, getting that all together. Uh, but since then, I'll tell you what I've done. I went ahead and um, installed our oil sump. I think it's a I think it's a one and a half quart uh, oil sump. There we didn't put the the bottom on her yet. And I went ahead and I installed our uh, head studs. So we are ready to rock and roll with those. I painted everything but the studs on them, and they should or the threads, and they should be ready to go. Now I went ahead and I installed. Um, one of my jugs today just dry because what we're going to be talking about today is deck height we're going to be figuring our deck height we already know what our head cc is we cc those they're at 51 cc's so based off of what we get with our deck height which is uh top of the piston to the uh, inside there of the head uh, or basically the top of the jug that's the measurement we're looking for today and we're doing that so we can figure out our compression ratio and we can stack shims in there to determine and make the compression ratio work for us a little bit now i've already ordered uh, I, I did some mathematics and i already ordered uh some some barrel shims to kind of push that up and I, let me uh let me get this turned around and i'll explain what we're really what we're looking at there well, now that we got this turned around you can see i've got the uh, cylinder exposed dry um so now with a normal stock 69 stroke crank um you would have a deck height in other words from the top of the piston to the top of this guy right there uh, you know, somewhere well in between 50 thousandths to 60 thousandths, or it just sort of depended on the year and, and that sort of thing. But that's, that's generally what you could expect from, from a stock setup on a 69 crank. Well, we've got a 74 crank now. So subtract uh, 69 from 74, you get a difference of 5 millimeters. Well, so, but the, obviously you got to split that in two. So what that means is if you split five and two and you get two and a half millimeters, you get an extra two and a half millimeters of stroke per side, if that makes sense. So naturally what that does, uh, I have chosen to use um, A pistons and stock rods. So now if you do a stroker, a lot of times people will go with B pistons for this and different length rods. Well, I didn't do that. And as a result, um, because of the extra two and a half millimeters, um, normally this piston would actually be pushing through the cylinder and hitting the head, which is a no-no. So how you fix that is you put shims in the base underneath the, uh, the jug there of the cylinder. And so knowing what I figure was sort of the you know, the sort of the stock 69 stroke setup, I sort of did some ciphering and um, I converted that. Uh, let me get out my overpriced calculator um, and do a calculation. So, two and a half millimeters. So, you got to convert millimeters to, um, I guess, inches. So, I divide that by whatever the conversion factor is, which is 25.4. Uh, 25.4 millimeters per inch so so I get 98 thousandths if that reads correctly on there 98 thousandths um, which is basically uh, you know almost uh, you know you're getting pretty close there to a whole number well I chose I said well I kind of want a little bit tighter deck clearance uh, I was aiming for somewhere in between 40 thousandths and 50 thousandths deck clearance. Uh, and I, the reason I say that is, is because the tighter the deck, the better. 
the less barrel fire, meaning the less uh, area in between the piston and the and the cylinder, I'm sorry, the piston and the head, uh, the more efficient your combustion burn is. So I don't like a lot of barrel fire. Uh, a lot of guys will tell you don't go uh, below 40 thousandths. Uh, it's kind of safe because, you know, things expand or whatever. So I digress. I did all that to say this. Uh, with the math I did, I guessed and I gambled on a 90 thousandths shim. Like I said, that was pretty close to our figure of uh, 0.098. So that's, you know, actually bring us a little bit closer than the stock setup. So. I have already installed uh, one shim in there dry, and this is in there dry, and we're going to test and see um, how it comes out. So work with me, and we will figure it out together. To measure deck height correctly, um, you know, they, they make a tool. They make a plate you can buy, and it's not super expensive, but I had this... A uh, scrap piece. It's uh, like a three-quarter inch aluminum, and I made this basically. So I mean, I'm gonna effectively do the same thing. Um, whereas basically, I slide that dude on. Let's get on there. Well, easier said than done. One-handed. If I was doing this with two hands, we'd have it right on. Well, we'll get there. Those threads get stuck and uh, there we go. Now she's going. Anyways, aha, there we go. Beautiful. Now, so we need to uh, put some clamping force down on that. So I'll just, just take some old uh, nipples, some sort of spacer of some sorts, and uh, then. Uh, Tighten her down with some nuts. So let's do that. There we go. Finally. Now I didn't really. Um, some people torque these down. I I didn't officially torque them down to the torque value of the heads. I just snugged her up really really good. So I just you know the idea is is make sure it's um, everything seated and sort of sitting on there. All right. How we're going to test this is we got to bring this up to top dead center. In other words, where the top of that piston is uh, as high as it's going to go. Um, I'm actually pretty close, so I think if I were to rotate, uh, let's see here. Okay. Let me look at my mark. That mark will go right there on the center of the case. There we go. And that looks like we got it. So I'm going to test this with two different methods. I'm going to use this, which is not the most accurate, but it'll get you in the ballpark. And I'm going to verify it with um, oh, these gauges here. And um, the reason I, I made it this way, that way I could do that. I could not only fit, uh, you know, that on the edge. Edge is technically not the most accurate, but, um, you know, we're trying to get in the ballpark. This will be the most accurate because you can go to the center with it. So let's uh, see what we get here. Okay, got that zeroed out. I think I'm on, no, I'm, let's get it inches because I like to communicate it inches at this point. All right, let's zero her out. Uh oh, I, I can't do this one handed, I don't think. There we go. All right. All right, I got 44 thousandths of an inch right there. Let me try her again somewhere else, closer to this side maybe. See what we get. Uh, that time I got 42. Let's try it over here, closer to this edge. So that automatically tells me we were... 46 so you know not super super accurate but I'm gonna try it with the feeler gauges 
But that uh, that is getting close in the ballpark of what I thought anyways. Alright, let's see here. Um, I'm doing this basically unedited, folks. Uh, what we got here? We got uh, 25, 24 thousandths right there. Um, and a 25. Yep. Let's see. That would be basically 49 thousandths. If I had to guess, I'd say it's probably going to be too, too tight. But let's try her out. Yep, she ain't going in there. Let's uh, let's try twenty-four thousandths, and what is the next one? Uh, guys, I'm sorry, I'm doing this one-handed, so I'm sorry if this is getting getting on your nerves. Uh, okay, we got there twenty-two and twenty-four, so that would be basically forty-six. Let's try that. Ooh, that's still slight. That's too snug. Let's try it again. Okay, that's our next one up. Um, this is all a very important part of the process um, in figuring up sort of this because you know you don't want to just guess uh, it. You really will optimize everything, and the whole reason why we're doing this too is so that um, you know we get the compression right oh this is a mess I'm sorry boys and girls eight I about got her here let's try a 25 thousandths and a 20 thousandths which would be basically be 45 thousandths let's try that all right bear with me <gasps> oh there you go that's it right there it's, it's draggy. There. Yeah, there we go. I think it's going to be about 44 or 45 thousandths. But let's see here. We may try. Let's try the 20 and the 24 thousandths gauge. Okay, if I can find the darn thing again. Uh, it's all gone hidden from me. Give me a second. <laughs> okay, verdict's in with two hands where I could actually get this darn thing underneath there it was the uh, 20 thousandths and the 25 thousandths equaling 45 thousandths uh, deck height all right we got it 45 thousand deck height so what does that mean well now we can compute our compression ratio so we got 51 cc's worth of uh, head volume and 45 thousandths worth of deck height so i'm gonna go to the cb performance page because they've got an engine calculator and that'll calculate it up for us really quick all right cb performance has a great engine calculator and it don't even have to be for volkswagen uh, you just put in your parameters uh, in our case the engine bore is going to be um 90.5 and our stroke is going to be 74 millimeters. Our deck height, which we just figured, was going to be 0 0.045, 45 thousandths, which is good because we, you know, we didn't want to go below 40 thousandths if we could get from it. So combustion chamber cc's, we calculated that last week at 51 cc's which is actually, usually it's 53, but 51, that's not bad. So, we want to solve for compression ratio. All right, so that just verifies the cubic inch, 1904 cc's, 116 cubic inches there. And our compression ratio is 9.2 to 1. All right, 9.2 to 1, what does that mean? I'm actually okay with that number because um, my cam, which is a SCAT uh, C35, uh, which is comparable to Engel 110 cam, uh, if you Volkswagen guys are following that, um, really a, 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 one of them cams needs at least 8.5 to 1 to really come alive. Um, I have an angle 110 in 
um, the Smurf Mobile at the moment, uh, the engine that's on there that we're going to pull, and I don't have that much compression. I think I have maybe eight or, or slightly less, and so it's not performing like it really could. But this guy, uh, you know, it's a, kind of a sporty little, you know, it's not a daily driver. If I was doing a daily driver, I think I'd want the compression down a little bit. But around around nine to one is just about right. Now I could have I could have gone up to um, you know uh, a little bit thicker shim, and that would have kind of done that, brought it to nine. But I'm okay with that because see, um, I will not detonate. Um, compression in a Volkswagen is different than compression in a Mopar or a Chevy or whatever um, because it causes them to run hot and uh, in you know you you got a little bit of timing to work to make it not detonate but all I run in my vehicles I'm talking about my my VWs I run 91 octane non-ethanol bar none I don't put 87 in there because they're just recreational vehicles and I don't drive them on a daily basis, so I'm not really worried about uh, cost savings. So that octane gas will work really nicely with that, and it'll still work with the cam. In fact, if I had bigger valve heads, I could have gone up to a SCAT C45, which would have been like an Ingle 120. Been pretty rowdy, uh, but you know, I don't need that. Like I said, I'm, I'm for sort of mid-range low torque for the most part, but I want to breathe you know, in the upper RPMs if I get up there, which I will at no name. And um, anyways, so I'm good with that. Well, guys, that's how you, uh, that's at least how I calculate the deck height. And um, maybe you've learned something from this uh, that you can apply. You can do this whether it's a stroker engine or a stock or whatever. Um, you can buy, like you said, one of these or make them like, you, like I did mine. Just make sure it's, it's good and... Um, flat and doesn't move and you'll be in good shape well anyways guys um i think where we're going to go next i hate to throw the boat anchor out on this project but if i don't do this next step we're going to be really missing out on a great opportunity so i we're going to do a little bit of porting on these heads here that i had uh bored out for the 90.5 cylinders Mainly, it's going to be here in the exhaust uh, because it's small. We need to kind of clean that up in there. But we're a lot better off in the exhaust arena than some of the uh, stock heads because, uh, well, I'll explain that once we get into it. But we're just going to do a mild porting. We're going to clean up. Um, some of this inside there and take a little bit of material most materials will come out of the exhaust but we're going to take some material out of here as well raise this deck a little bit and that will really really help her flow well uh i'm gonna be gone for a couple days on a trip but when i get back that's what we're getting on because i'd be ready to go ahead and bolt these babies up uh these heads up if they were already you know ported but i i think i can spend a good day or two days doing that and uh getting her cleaned up we'll see but uh, i need to get them on there that way we can get it done so anyways guys that's where we're going to leave today's video i uh, hope i hadn't bored you and hope you've learned something so keep following us and until the next video we will see you